tough news coming out of Chapel Hill this weekend with uh, the passing of Tali Kraft. And uh, you know, we've got a couple of kids that played with him. And uh, they've, uh, you know, they've obviously, you know, have uh, you know, just a tough deal. And we talked about it a little bit yesterday. But uh, just our thoughts and prayers are with Coach Brown and the Kraft family and uh, the UNC family. So it's something that, uh, as a coach, you never want to, you never want to go through. So, but uh, it's game week. Should be uh, you know good week for practice this week. Uh, players are really excited about the matchup. Obviously, get a chance to play a ranked opponent uh, on the road uh, is a challenge, but uh, it's something that uh, the players are you know they're excited to get back on the field and play. And uh, just having the opportunity with the bye to you know be able to sit and just actually watch a game, uh, watch the UAB and Army, uh, the 12 o'clock kickoff on, on Saturday, and uh, obviously you know. Not just looking at that game, but looking at all their games. Uh, very solid football team, uh, top to bottom, all three phases. Uh, you know, offensively, you know, everything revolves around the veteran quarterback. Uh, he does a great job. And, you know, he has a lot of, you know, really, uh, you know, really strong players around him. Uh, but uh, you know, they've, uh, you know, they're six and zero, and they're six and zero for a reason. Uh, they've played really good football uh, so far this year. So it's a great opportunity for our program going into Sunday's matchup. Questions? You can raise your hand. Coach, just looking at their offense, I mean, they do some shotgun stuff along with the, the regular under center. Just how much has their offense, the triple option, evolved since obviously you, you ran it years ago? You know, they, they're they not as much beer option as what, say, Navy used to be or what we were back in the day. You know, they do run some midline triple. That's really the only true triple option we've seen out of them. Uh, a lot of their stuff is either, you know, quarterback follow, quarterback counter, quarterback zone. Uh, they run some uh, arc option where they pitch it to the fullback, you know, they run toss. Um, you know, they do a lot of other stuff, but the big thing revolves around the quarterback and the fullback. You know, I think that uh, uh, Six, U Uda, I think that's where he pronounced his name, uh, really good running back. And they, uh, you know, do a lot of stuff with him just on dives, dive cut back. Things right like that. Noah Short uh, is uh, one of their slot backs. They try to get him the ball, either you know, pitch it to him, hand it to him, or throw it to him. Uh, but everything in that offense revolves around Bryson Daly and that offensive line. Coach, how fine is the line between trying to stop the run and getting everybody in the box and then the play action pass? Because that's another uh, big weapon. Yeah, I think uh, you know statistically. I was, I was looking at his stuff this morning, and they've only thrown it like 30 times on the year. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's yeah 37 times. He's 20 of 37 for 482 yards. So you know they're they're pretty effective when they do throw it, and you know that's it. And we've been you know working last week on it, and you know have really you know drilled into our secondary that you know their eye discipline is is critical. Uh, you know the tough thing is being able to replicate. You know what they do because you know they do get such condensed sets where the receivers are down in there. They got receivers lined up in a tight end position. They got those slot backs either one on each side, two on the same side, or whatever. And they're you know such a run heavy team. And then all of a sudden you play action. And if you don't have you know, very disciplined eyes, you can look up and you know just like Saturday uh, they crossed the 50 against UAB. You know, we'll play action uh, post wheel to the boundary right there, and there's nobody within 30 yards of the post route. Uh, it's a very common theme that we've seen throughout the first six games on film. So, you know, that, that is the challenge is, you know, our, our secondary is going to have to support and they've got to support, you know, with some, some uh, tenacity because you have a 225 pound quarterback uh, that you're trying to tackle. Uh, but they've got to have great eyes so that when those guys release, uh, you know, those play action passes that they don't, uh, you know, just cut somebody loose. Coach, what was the biggest realization or takeaway that you had during the bye week with you and your team about yourselves that will help you into this week? Well, I thought uh, I thought the team responded really, really well during the bye week. Um, you know, the leadership council asked if they could have a, uh, a players meeting uh, last week when we started the week, and because we had talked about a lot of things in, in that uh, in that group, and they wanted to relay some things from a standpoint of you know, here's what we have to do as players. They had that on Tuesday, and I thought uh, really had a positive week. 
very, very physical practice on Wednesday, very physical practice on Thursday, had a great enthusiasm, had a sharp practice on, uh, on Friday. And so for a bye week, I thought that, uh, you know, the, a lot of maybe just uh, recentering, uh, uh, a little bit of a reset, uh, and just kind of getting back to what we want to be uh, now. We've got a great practice this week, and obviously a pretty stiff test. But uh, we're, we're excited about going up there and having a chance to play this ball game. Coach, talk about that test, first ranked opponent of the year, first time kind of coming to this as a true underdog this week. Is that something you feed into being an underdog or something you kind of put aside and ignore for the time being? Well, I mean, it's, it's just uh, a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, our kids, uh, they got a lot of pride uh, in, in the way we want to play. Uh, and so it's a great challenge. But obviously, you know, there shouldn't be any pressure on us. You know, Got a great chance to go up there and play free and play aggressive and uh, you know go uh, go try to do something special. A lot of similarities in their defense and your defense. Do you think your offense has a little bit of advantage, seeing the similar defense they saw all summer long, and you've I think seen two or three teams that run that this year as well? Yeah, um, you know they're not quite as diverse uh, as we are. You know, they uh, they play more coverage than uh, than pressure as much, uh, but uh, you know there are some similarities from the standpoint of you know three down four down. Uh, they run a lot of nickel fire. Uh, they're you know, some quarter, quarter half and uh, three weak uh, and uh, a little bit of quarters in the secondary. Uh, and, you know they just they do a really good job of keeping everything in front of them. You know so trying not to give up the big play. Uh, you know trying to make teams execute. You know the teams have the teams that have struggled to you know put together uh, you know consistent drives and, and operate are the ones that uh, you know, find themselves behind pretty quickly. And so I think the key to them is just not uh, not shooting yourself in the foot. You know, going out there and operating real well. Uh, you know not having sloppiness, not having penalties that set you behind the chains uh, because you, know, you don't want to end up in uh, third and long against them. That's when they have the advantage. When facing an uh, offense like Army's, you want some extra time to prepare. So how beneficial was it to have the bye week last week in preparation for Army? Well, I think it's good. I mean, it's, that's always the challenge when you don't have, um, you know, an extra extra week is it's hard to go from defending the spread offense to just defending this uh, in just one week's preparation. And so, uh, you know, having, having the last week to really get prepared for it, uh, you know, that's we talked about it last night when we finished up with our, our practice and meetings was, you know, our kids, they know the game plan uh, right now. Uh, now it's can be perfected over the next several days because, you know, they take advantage of uh, the opponent's mistakes. You know, you get out of position, you don't support the perimeter correctly, uh, you know, you don't do a good job supporting those quarterback follows with all those lead blockers up in there and, they, and you give the quarterback a crease or you give the fullback a crease or, you know, you don't support the perimeter on short. Uh, you know, that's when they have the big plays that really gash you. And uh, so it's great to have a bye last week. Uh, you know, we'll be very prepared going into Saturday, and then we just got to go and uh, execute and play our game. And, and the key is going to be, you know, matching the physicality of that offensive line, uh, matching the physicality of that defensive line for our offense, uh, and then executing at a high level. Um, who will start at quarterback for you guys this week, and what kind of uh, evaluation is going into that decision? Well, I think the, you know whoever gives us the best opportunity to go out there and win on Saturday is going to start at quarterback. Uh, but obviously, there's a lot that goes into uh, that decision, and uh, you know I think that we have two very capable guys. Uh, but uh, you know, whoever gives us the best opportunity to win on the game day is going to start. Which you obviously know the passion of Pirate Nation well. You know, a lot was said after the Charlotte game on social media. Do you, you know, use that as fuel? You know, you're addressing with the team. I'm just curious. You block it out. How you kind of handle all that stuff? Well, I think that uh, none of us were happy with our performance uh, the last time out. And uh, I say that I mean Pirate Nation, me, the players, none of us. And uh, you know, we take a lot of uh, we take we take this very seriously. And uh, obviously, the players. The staff, they invest a lot. You know, it's, you know, when, when you're asleep at night, it depends on how you play on Saturday. I mean, that's, that's pretty serious stuff. And so uh, we've all, uh, you know, 
tried to do a great job during this extra bye week of uh, correcting things, addressing things. Uh, you know, hey, this is what we want to do. This is not what we want to do. And uh, I think that uh, the team is in a good spot uh, you know, going into this week. And I think that you're going to see a group that's very motivated on Saturday. And I think you're going to see the, the, the team go out and play the way we want to see them play Saturday. You know, you mentioned earlier about you know just the players leading here. I mean, how how encouraging is that for that to come from them, and also just knowing you still have you know half a season to play. Yeah, I think that's both of those questions um, are you know things that uh, I'm very blessed. We have worked very hard to put together the character of young men that we have in this program, and uh, they don't disappoint me in that aspect. We may not have played as well as we wanted to the last time out, but uh, then on a daily basis, they don't disappoint me in who they are. And so I'm not shocked to see that kind of uh, positive leadership from, uh, from our older players. At the same time, I'm very appreciative of it. And uh, the thing that they know is we're sitting here mid-season, three and three, one and one in the conference. We've got six opportunities guaranteed here in the second half. Uh, half goes on the road, half of them home. And uh, just like with the first half of the the conference schedule, you know, we got to take it, uh, you know, one week at a time. And the goal this week is to go one and zero, and that's got to be our focus each week. And as you look at the landscape of college football and all across the country, I mean, nobody on a week-to-week -week basis is just mowing through everybody. I mean, it's you see a team play great one week, and you see a team, you know, shock them the next. And so, uh, I'll have a lot of. Uh, faith and belief in the potential of this group, and I think that uh, we've got as good a shot as anybody, and so we're excited about the second half of the season. Coach, the Army hasn't trailed all year. You know, the start of the game, how important, obviously every start's yeah. important, but just to, to maybe not get very early yeah. at that place. Well, and that's, that's what they're doing to a lot of people. It's like Saturday, I mean, you know, UAB, they go forward on fourth and five, they're on the opening drive, don't get it. Army scores on the first play. Uh, you know, they they punt, UAB stalls and they punt and Army drives down and it's 14-0 and you haven't even blinked yet. And uh, that's what we've seen consistently. And I think they've scored on the first drive of every game. And I think they've scored on the first two drives of every game except for one. And so uh, they're obviously playing at a very high level. They've got a lot of experience in that offense. Uh, you know, they're very solid all three phases. And so, you know, they get up two, three scores, and you know it, they put a lot of pressure on the opponent. Um, you know, at the same time, you know it's I, I, I don't know how much they've been challenged to play a full game yet, and uh, you know that's the that's the thing where I see a lot of opportunity is you know going in there and you know playing really well and don't give them anything. Uh, you know, I, I think that our bunch is going to play really well Saturday. You know, and having a shot to go into the fourth quarter. An opportunity to win on the road, and uh, you know that's the goal for the for the players. Any other questions? Thank you, Coach.